I'm not advocating for like a law that says that you, you, if you're married, you have to have, <laughs> you have to have X number of kids. Um, but then why are you opposed to two gay people doing that? Ooh. Well, because, because again, it's, it's, isn't that a fundamental aspect of what it means to be American, to have that freedom? It is. Joe Rogan well, is right. Yeah. Destroyed by Joe Rogan on this. Hand- the Joe Rogan experience. I think of marriage is, is a certain thing, which is the, um, the context for uh for procreation for the for the the building of the the nuclear family what about people that get married that don't have kids are you opposed to that what if they get married they decide you know what we don't need kids i'm gonna get fixed you get your tubes tied let's travel the world well what do you mean am i opposed to it i mean i i think that uh that every married couple should be open to life but what if they don't want to are you opposed to them being married if marriage is only for procreation and to bond a family together what about people that are deeply in love that never want to have children? I, I don't think it's it's not only procreation, but that is one of the <laughs> fundamental <laughs> definitional uh, uh, aspects of it. Uh, of course, there's more to marriage just than that. And know? what about people that are infertile? They fall in love and they realize that they can have babies. And they don't really necessarily mm-hmm. want and to they, adopt. And is that okay well, for them to be married? Because then you're by definition, marriage falls in. Wait, real quick. Does anybody have a uh, a four reactor nuclear plant? I can't just make two of them, right? I want like a special. I'm donating to a rich streamer, so I can stumble over my words during call-ins. Let's go. Based. I want a special four reactor one because I need all four reactors to be together, right? Can I get a four nuclear reactor set up? Thank you. And do a completely different thing because then it's a bond of love. It's a union of love. Sure. I mean. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, well, that doesn't change the nature of of marriage, though. It's a, it's a little bit like um, I say that. Uh, uh, What's the definition of a woman? Well, a woman is someone who by her nature can conceive children in her womb and bear children. And then the response is always, well, what about women who are infertile? Does that, right. does that destroy your definition of woman? And uh, it, it doesn't because you know, it, it's, still, it's still a woman's nature to bear children. It, not every woman will, and there will be disease and infertility and, and old age and all these things that will Thank preclude you. that, but it's still, it's still of her nature to do so. Um, and I would say the same thing for marriage. I mean, it's, it, it is natural in a marriage for, for procreation to occur. It's not always going to happen in reality, though, but that's still... Why is it red track? That's still one you. of the natural functions of marriage. And, and uh, married couples who can't conceive children. There are other ways to um, be parents, like adoption, for example. If they want to. Right, so, but if people want to be married and don't want to ever have children, are you opposed to them being married? Well, I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't advocate a law that would prevent it. But would I, it change the definition of what their marriage is to you? Because they don't want to have a family; they just want to have a loving bond. <laughs> I think this would be a, a couple that is. Oh man, rejecting. You need to play uh, my reactor if you want to win. Wink, wink, okay. marriage, and they they should be they they should be open to to life. I would hope that in the future they would be, but. But isn't that just a personal choice? I mean, you can have a very fulfilling life if you just follow your pursuits and your dreams and your your interests and Wrong. find someone that shares those interests with you and you share time together. Not for this it's guy. Very fulfilling it's and a, loving. Yeah, it's a it's a pers- it's a personal choice, and that I'm I'm not advocating for like a law that says that you you if you're married you have to have <laughs> you have to have X number of kids. Um, but then why are you opposed to two gay people doing that? Well, because because again, it's it's not in it's their not nature. It's about choice. It's about what this institution, marriage is an institution, and what is it, and what purpose does it serve? And I I, I do not agree with um, tearing down or, or or changing this definition, especially because the people who have changed the definition haven't come up with a new one. So they they say, well, that's not what marriage is. So for thousands of years, we said marriage is the procreative union. And then we had the other side that came along and said, well, it's not that. Okay, well then, like, what is it exactly? I mean, Rogan and just gave you a well, decent it's, definition. It's people who love each other. Two people love each other. Well, but then, well, why two people? Right? Why do they have to love each other? Um, you know, all these kinds of questions. You get into, you know, what if they're, they're in the same family? What if brothers and sisters want to marry? And wow. I know every time that comes up, you know, the, the advocates for gay marriage will say, well, that's a slippery slope argument. That's a fallacious. But... It's actually not. It's like we're trying to get to what do you even think this institution is now since you've rejected out what we were saying it was. And um, and I've never found a a compelling definition. And any 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 definition offered, it's like, like, well, what's even the point then? Why do do we even need this now? 
I just don't see mm. how mm. a gay marriage in any way damages a straight marriage. I don't, I don't see it at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems to me that people want to be... Look, if you if you wanted to... Lex clipped a segment from your interview on Joe Rogan is doing Iron Man number. Yeah, apparently a lot of people were mad in the comments about this. Apparently Lex is a lot of Joe Rogan fans. I think they were a good conversation. <laughs> Jesus. They were super mad. Look at logic, especially in our modern society, which is pretty when it comes to relationships. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of all marriages end in divorce anyway. They don't make it. You know, if well, I don't know if anything would damage marriage and more damage than the institution, <laughs> more than marriage, marriage, the option of divorce. I don't think gay people and gay wow. people getting married in any way, shape, or form changes a bond that you have with your wife. It's just called marriage. It's a human invented thing. If we decide that gay people can get married too, I just don't see how it damages anything. I don't think it tears down the definition of marriage in any way. It just opens up the possibility that people who are gay won't be discriminated against. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that a, a gay couple existing uh, directly impacts, you know, there's a gay couple and you know, wherever, and, and I'm with my wife in, in our house. Like obviously right. there's not, um, but I'm talking about, I'm not talking about on the, on the individual level, I'm talking about on the, on the, the societal level. Right. I would agree that um, divorce, especially, uh, you know, uh, there's no fault divorce, rampant divorce. I don't think it's as high as 50%. I know that that's, the, that's often quoted. I'm not sure where that comes from, but um, it is high. It's like, it's too high. And, and Chris I, and, Rock has a great joke about that. He and said, it, those are just the people with the courage to get out. <laughs> He's like, how many cowards stay? But it's also, it's also true that the advocates for what we call now traditional marriage, which I just call marriage, but the advocates for traditional marriage put themselves at a disadvantage by allow, especially in the churches, like allowing this rampant divorce to occur. Um, and then you've, al you've already sort of given up on some, marriage is supposed to be monogamous and, uh, and permanent as well as procreative. Well, you've given up monogamy and permanence. And so now it's not, that's, that's, that's two of the three legs gone. And so now this assault was waged on the procreative part of it, and it was just it was it was difficult to, to withstand it because the institution had already been weakened. So I agree with you there, um, but my but, answer to that is to try to reinforce what marriage is, not to just give up on it entirely. And I I still think you're left with this question of like if marriage is not what I'm saying it is, what is it? Then what why do we even need it? What's the point? I mean, you're saying it's a it's a man made institution. Yes, but you, but you're also it, like, the way <laughs> yes. you're pre presenting it. It's a, it's a, it's also it's a totally meaningless institution. No, so they don't need it at all. No, it's not meaningless because it means something to the people that get married. So it's just it's just a subjective, symbolic thing. I mean, what? Yeah. It, so if kind of what it is. Look, there's a <laughs> massive responsibility when you're married and when you have children to keep your family together and you raise and keep everybody happy and healthy. And there's great reward to that. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't always work out. Yeah. It's not, it's not a, it's, people change. People are fucked up. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. And so I don't think it should be outlawed because 50% of the people fall apart. Just like, I don't think it has any effect whatsoever on a straight couple. If a gay couple decides that they want to make it official. And that's what it is to them. It, it gives them a feeling that that they're accepted and appreciated and that they're not discriminated against because they happen to be homosexual. So well, what you're articulating to me is the damage that's done by gay marriage to the institution of marriage. But how is it done? How is that because, in any way damaged straight people? Because, because we are making the institution meaningless. But it's not but, meaningless. Well, but it's just very like, meaningful to the people that but, have it. Subjective, symbolic, and it's about your own personal feelings. Isn't it though? Well, no, I, I would say that it's not. It's, it's, well, if it's not subjective and it's not symbolic, it's, then it's, it, it, it codifies and protects and uh, gives a name to what the fuck a, is a this thing that stuff? actually exists, which is which are you know man woman couples creating people, oh, creating, creating babies. Um, so but not always. 
<laughs> right, but again, but that's, that's, still the, that's still the nature of the union. So, But what are the percentage of people today that are married that don't have children? I bet it's pretty high amongst heterosexuals. Probably. And? Is there something wrong with that? Yes. I, I think there is something wrong with that. Thank I, you. I think it, it, there, there is something wrong with you know, getting married and saying, oh, we're, just, we, we don't, we're not going to have any kids at all. But why is there something wrong with that if someone's personal choice? Well, why would that? Why is it wrong that two people are like, you know, I am deeply committed to work and I don't want to say. Why does it matter? I feel like I've spent so much time in conservative circles now. I feel like I know all of these answers better than they do. I don't know why Matt can't just answer the fucking question. The question from a religious point of view is that the entire like supra structure of the world rests foundationally on the relationship between like a father and mother, right? That the family is the building block of society. If you said that a family, a strong man who is a father and a strong woman who is a mother create one of the fundamental building blocks that build into your communities, that build into your local political scenes, that build into your state and the federal governments that's why marriage is important when that when that um if from the conservative point of view when that institution dissolves when the nuclear family breaks down then your governments your communities all of that the, the world will break down as well i don't know why he won't just say that that's the answer i, I don't understand how it's so hard for him to just say that how is, i feel like every single time i've seen this mac guy talk anywhere he's a clueless bumbling dip he's so dumb i don't know but he has like glasses and a beard and people think he's really smart it drives me crazy oh my god sacrifice any of my career and I don't want to ruin a kid because I'm constantly at the office but that's where I get deep satisfaction and and that's that's what I'm focused on and the, the woman says that's great because I don't want children either I really am yeah. c attached to my interests and my career and what I like to do that, that's not damaging your relationship with your wife and your family it's I don't certainly I certainly don't think of it as a threat to my marriage or my family. He's the Vosh of the right. Jim. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a personal choice. Right, but shouldn't but people be allowed to make those? It's not It's not a personal choice. That's the thing. One thing that these conservatives need to, to contend with um, that they haven't fully understood yet is you guys are not liberals, like in the, in the classical sense where you believe like in liberalism and freedom of individuality and all that shit. Like a lot of the more conservative people have moved away from those ideas. You guys are very much like in these collectives now. So when somebody says, well, isn't it my freedom of choice to do something? I think the problem is you've got like a lot of those older conservative talking points in your head where like oh like yeah i guess i do like f freedom and you should have the freedom to choose but you have to eject that you don't care about freedom what you care about is well actually no it's not that you have the freedom to do whatever you want that's where trans people come from that's where uh immorality comes from it's that you have an obligation to um enact a family structure that's given to us by god and then put on place to ensure like the the fine functioning uh, of human c civilization and society if everybody just went off and off and did whatever they want then we would all like die right we have some obligation to ourselves and to society to have healthy families and blah blah, blah. like that, that's the answer but i don't know if they're like stuck in some world where they think they still believe like in freedom and liberalism and all that shit or or what and they're like having a hard time reconciling that or what but just like embrace it bro like dump the liberalism you obviously don't give a fuck about it that's fine dump the liberalism and embrace like the traditional like um like Christian, whatever bullshit, collectivist bullshit you're on. Like, just do that. You need the, um, what are they called? Third positionists? <laughs> like, Jesus. Personal choices. Like, isn't that a fundamental aspect of what it means to be American, to have that freedom? It is. Joe Rogan well, is right, right. Yeah, but right now we're not talking about what people are allowed to do. I'm not saying well, that. Well, we're talking about marriage, gay marriage. Okay, that, we, were, we, were, we were just discussing straight couples who choose not to have choose, That's also a personal freedom issue, isn't right. it? Yeah, but, and I'm not saying that, that straight couples should be legally required to have kids, but I, I, you know, if you're asking me, do I think it's the right choice to just get married and choose not to have kids ever, I, I, I do not think that that's the right choice. It might, it's, their, it's their choice, but people can make choices that are wrong. God, and it's so boring, too. He's doing the Hassan thing where you're like, do you think this is moral or immoral? And he's like, well, I personally wouldn't. I'm, no one's asking you. No one's asking what you personally, no one cares what you personally would do. No one, literally no one cares. Why are, you, why are you answering like that? Conservative Protestants hold marriage with unspoken standards, ironically opposed to the idea of freedom of choice and separation of church and state. Um, and you can disagree. But how is it wrong if they have a fulfilling and wonderful life together with that choice? If their their thing is that they just want to have a bond between the two of them to just like take it to the next yeah. level, let everybody know like we are married. If I die, my money's going to go to Helen, and if Helen dies, you know I you know I'm going to mourn her because she was my wife, and now I'll be a widower. 
Like to some people, that distinction gives them peace and security and makes them feel better about the relationship that they're both so committed that they've legally signed documents that say that they're bound by law and under the eyes of God or whatever you believe in. Yeah. They're, they're able to make that choice, but I think you're, they're still rejecting one of the purposes of marriage. And in the scenario that you just outlined, you're also deciding to live a really self-centered life. There, it's what getting closer. It, yeah, that's closer. Self-centered. You're not doing what's best for society. Okay, hold on. He might stumble his way into the right fucking answer. Your work is very charitable. What if it benefits humanity in a deep way? What if you spend a lot of time doing, you know, healthcare work and, you know, and uh, social work and you're, you're deeply committed to your community? It's not selfish at all. You're just dedicating your time to something I mean, other than raising God, new humans. Imagine community. getting destroyed by Joe Rogan on this. No offense to Joe Rogan, but that around you. That's a hypothetical. It I, is a hypothetical, right, but so but, is yours, right? Yeah, but I, I think most of the people that choose, like, we're not going to have kids, and, and the and the the rate of uh, those rates are declining, um, and the age when people first have kids is also going up, and, and all that. And, yeah. And, and I, I, most of the people that are making these choices, I don't I don't think it's because they're involved in charity work. I, I do think that it is more the the scenario you outlined. In the, in the first time around, which is just like, well, I, I, this is what I'm doing. You know, I have my job. I don't want to give it up. Yeah. Because of, um, but don't you think that people should have the freedom to live their life in that way? I think human beings vary widely in a huge way. And I think there's some human beings that find a very fulfilling life, just reading books and traveling and experiencing different things and seeing art and doing whatever the fuck they want to do. And they don't necessarily have to have kids to live a fulfilling life that way. And if they choose to do that with someone who they have a loving bond with and who they get married to, I don't think it's a bad thing that they don't want to have kids. Well, I think, I guess we have to, maybe we're running into a, a question of, of, you know, fundamental you values. Really fundamental I think it's like a what? fundamental freedom thing. Yeah, it, 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 We're not disagreeing, I guess, on the freedom aspect of it, because again, I'm not saying that you should be required to have kids. But so, you're imposing your sensibilities on what you think is important in life to other people. But everybody has a different idea of what's I'm important not, in I'm life not, without hurting anyone. The thing is, like, m what I'm saying is these people that are, that are married, that don't have children, they're not harming anyone. They're not harming these unborn children that they never have. They're not harming anyone. And it doesn't affect your relationship with your family and your marriage at all. Yeah, but and I'm also it, not I'm not imposing myself on them or in, in harming them by answering a question about about right. how I feel about their choices. Right, but nor are gay people doing that to you. I if, think the <laughs> I, the harm comes from on a societal level. There we go, getting closer. We start breaking down. There we these. go. How long did it take him to get here? Holy shit. 14 fucking minutes to to finally stumble into the fucking answer. Jesus Christ basic uh, central institutions like the, the institution of the, of the family and of marriage that's where the harm, harm comes from and the, the more that people believe the more that we build a society where it's believed that marriage is objectively meaningless right it's it's entirely subjective it's just about it's just about making you feel better um, the more that we build a society like that I think the that's where the harm comes in the, wor the worse it is and people are gonna reject marriage um, and uh, and that means more, you know, fewer kids are being born. Also, more kids are being born in a context where they don't have that stable family structure. So the harm definitely comes. It may not be this immediate, you know, connect the dots thing, but uh, and when we can already see that. Cringe, bro, bro. You just posted cringe on the Joe Rogan podcast. Lex Friedman defends Joe Rogan. How mad are they at me? Or how mad at me are they in this subreddit? Oh man, did I miss it? I listened up until just before Melina came on. Did you guys talk about Joe and like issues you have with his podcast? Um, on Lex, not not on the show, no. Oh, okay. I saw your back and forth with Lex over Hassan. It was pretty fucking funny. Yeah. 
Mm. Wait, is the Joe Rogan subreddit an anti-fan sub? No, it's not. It kind of, it's not an anti-fan sub, but they're very critical of them. They have Jesus. been since COVID shit started. Oh, and yeah, because I see that COVID shit here. That's, I didn't expect that, but I don't know if maybe it's turned into an anti-fan subreddit. I'm not sure. Oh, so these people actually support me here. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no. That we have engaged in giving funding and there are military adventures afoot and, and like, you know, what, what do you think should be done at this point with respect to aid for Ukraine? Aid, yeah, in yeah. Well, military, can... humanitarian, all of it. Well, obviously, you should never have make, made any military contributions to Ukraine at the start. You should have got into the negotiation, probably, in two thousand and seven, and figured it out then. Seven years before the illegal coup that deposed the democratically elected government of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and as we know, funded by the United States, organized by the CIA, Victoria Newland was there. We ah, the Newland, ah, the Newland phone call. What a great phone call. <laughs> um, I'd prefer if there was one leader to another. Oh, by prefer, you mean orchestrated with the CIA to have a new leader installed? Uh, her conversations are well known because they were taped and, were, and leaked with Jeffrey Pyatt, or Pyatt was his name, the American ambassador. And where, interestingly enough, in one of those conversations, he asks about, but what about the EU? And she says, the EU. Yeah. <laughs> and it's on tape. It's yeah, on what? tape. It's Imagine on... two ambassadors literally talking about their Jason Bourne plot to overthrow Ukraine. How stupid to be talking about that. Isn't, it's almost hard to even believe that somebody could be that dumb, huh? I mean. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it and, you know, f the EU. So it should have been dealt with then. But American foreign policy is we are. LSD, you claim LSD is hard to Roger, Water, Roger Waters has proved that psychosis is a long time. Ago. This is psychosis. This is just standard lefty talking points. That's all of this is. It's like going to rule the world. We are ruling the world and we're going to go on ruling the world. We are happy with this unipolar state. We're the only country that has any real power in the world is the United States of America, and we're going to keep it like that. And that is what we're, and that's what the expansion of NATO right up to the Russian border was about. Well, guess what, Biden and the rest of you in the hierarchy of politics in the United States, you're living in the past. The unipolar thing ain't going to fly. And if you've been reading any of the news from anywhere around the world, you will know that the rest of the world, the other three quarters of the population of the world, does not agree with you about Ukraine. It's only you and Western Europe. Good job, Bernie.